and we are live. Hi, welcome to my broadcast. This is episode 820. It's 820 in case you're tracking. And the topic today is now you're in that amazing relationship. What else is there? Or what's next? Or you know, what else is there? That was it. Or is, is that all there is? Sorry, I had to make sure I remember what it said because I rehashed the title a couple of times. I'll explain what I mean in a moment, but before I jump into the topic and give you all the juicy details, let me introduce myself so you know who I am and what I'm about. Um, hi, my name is Barry Selby. In case you didn't already know, that's somewhere around the broadcast title. I am an inspirational speaker, relationship, and love expert, as well as an author of a best selling book, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, a book for couples and, couples and singles, men and women, anybody looking for more love and having better relationships. Um, I help women create balance in love, life, and business because I'm a passionate champion for the divine feminine. That informs my work and also I started these talks over two years ago, two and a half years ago now, called Messages from the Masculine Inspiring a Feminine Heart. That's why today we're episode number 820. So the topic today is going to be unpacking a little bit about the goal setting people do um, and the achieving of that incredible ideal of the perfect relationship which is a fallacy, but I'm not gonna, not gonna touch that one yet. Unless it comes up in the talk, we'll see what happens. So let's jump in. Where do I start? <laughs> it's like going there and here and here. Let me just start from the beginning. Um, I've been doing this work for a while now, uh, probably nine, 10 years of doing relationship-centric conversations, coaching, support, etc. Over that time, I've met a lot of people who are dating coaches, matchmakers, um, marriage therapists, guides, hookup artists, bunch of different stuff out there who all promise to deliver certain results. A lot of the clients who come into those to work with us collectively are looking for the love they really want. They're looking for the amazing relationship that will fill them, make them feel happy and everything's perfect. And I guess I want to give you a sort of a cautionary perspective. Because for some people, the ideal is foot watch two sides. Uh, here we go, things are showing up already. One side is you meet that perfect person and you discover once you're in that relationship that what you really wanted isn't what you got, or rather what you wanted isn't what you really wanted. Like this perfect relationship you have is not as perfect as you thought it was gonna be. Even though it's everything you asked for and you start discovering that maybe you didn't quite clarify what you wanted. That's one side. The other side is that when you get the relationship you really want, you know what to do with it when you have it. Maybe start undermining it because you don't feel you deserve it. I have seen people who have been in amazing relationships who basically um, sabotage their relationship because they didn't think they deserved it. So that's another way of playing things in a negative way. But let me speak to a... Th oh, maybe I, can, I may come back to those two. Let me go further in, which is basically you're in this relationship and now you don't know what to do about it. One of the things people do when they get into a relationship, especially that one they've been waiting for and praying for and working towards and studying for and practicing for and all these different things, but when they get there, they stop putting effort out. There's this thing that some people have, and I know men have it more than women to a degree because we are goal-oriented people. I'll break that piece down in a moment. So getting to a relationship is the goal. Once they're there, we're like, okay, chief dig, you know, so, you know like goal accomplished, I'm done. Some women do the same thing as well. Now, the reason why men do it primarily when they're in the masculine is because we are, we are um, target-oriented. We are um, hunters by nature. That's, that's the innate masculine trait, is to be hunters. So in a relationship, the relationship is the, is the prey. It is the, uh, that doesn't sound too good. It's the target, it's the goal we want to accomplish. And when we get there, it's like, okay, I'm complete. I've, I've achieved the goal, I've got the target, I'm satisfied. The thing that people don't consider oftentimes, is once they're in that amazing relationship, hi Catherine, nice to see you again, thanks for being here. Once you're in that amazing relationship, you don't actually um, continue to feed it. Let me say it this way. A relationship is a living thing, so to speak. It's a organic, growing exploration that's designed to expose and explore each other's strengths and weaknesses and everything in between. It's an interesting place to play in a relationship. So say that right up front. Because it is a living thing, like all living things, and if you have houseplants you've killed, you know what I mean, it requires that you keep it alive and growing. 
So you may achieve being in that amazing relationship and, and, and be absolutely excited to be there. However, being in that relationship doesn't mean a thing if you don't contribute to it. It doesn't mean a thing if you don't keep growing it and thriving. You're, a relationship is a great place to, let me say another way. Once you get into that amazing relationship, you've hit the starting point. Hey Steve, nice to see you, Mr. Sir. nice to be my broadcast. So once you're in that relationship, that's when the work really begins. Some people think, okay, all the work's getting to that relationship, getting into that relationship. And it's like, I've done all that work, so I've achieved it. Look, I've got this amazing relationship. I'm complete, I'm whole, I'm successful. Not so fast. That's when the real work begins. Because the amazing relationship you're gonna get into, if you really were going for the deeper type of relationship I talk about, and I'm passionate about, is when you start to look at, okay, now what I need to do once I'm in the relationship. Being in a relationship is not a resting place, I'm sorry to say. Yes, you can rest in each other's company and there's certain things about the whole piece, but the truth is, it's the place where the work really begins and grows and thrives because when you step out into the world in that relationship, it's like you're not dragging a dead body with you. <laughs> you're bringing a conscious person and you have a consciousness between the two of you in that relationship that requires um, contribution, so to speak. And I don't mean like contributing to a worthy cause, I mean contributing to the growth between the two of you. A healthy relationship is defined by the contribution of both partners towards the greater sum, the greater whole that you two are part of. And being in a relationship together, and this is the thing, the ideal relationship is one that you are both happy and excited to be and thinking you both got the best choice you made. Because some people look for the perfect relationship, but the person they actually are with didn't have the same thing in return. And that can be a discordant and un an uneven thing. In fact, I guess I'm gonna to to go there. In my book, there's a chapter I talk about rubber, ba rubber band relationships. So let me speak to this piece just as a choice because for some people, your a goal of an achieving an amazing relationship is, again, not met by the person on the other side. You haven't both said we want the most amazing relationship, you find each other and it's kids met and it's perfect and everything's wonderful. When it's out of whack like that, when it's out of balance, there's a tension on the relationship. Um, looking for, sorry, I'd use props. <laughs> So I'm just going to use, um, this is actually just this chord, but I want to use this because it's like a, like a rubber band. So this piece of the rubber band is the, is the metaphor I'm going to use, or the model I'm going to use. So, you're in a relationship with somebody, and there's a certain level of tension, because again, you are in a, a living experience, expressing thing called a relationship, so there's going to be a tension in there. If, however, you're the one that's really joyful and excited to be there, but the other person isn't, there's going to be a shift that happens, and it's going to be tension pulling on that relationship. It's going to basically and break this is not rope, it's not elasticated, but you're going to pull on that relationship. So you may be going gung ho to make this relationship amazing, the other person is dragging their feet because they're not interested. Maybe you're actually deciding to change your life and become more um, effective at being loving, contributing. Maybe you're going to be doing tantra classes, you want to have a great time in relationship romance with them, but they're not doing anything. There's a tension that keeps pulling on that relationship. And at some point in time, one of three things will happen. The, most, the least likely thing that will happen is that you're realizing that you've taken more distance from your partner and you're putting more tension on that relationship. You decide it's rather be, you'd rather stay where you are than do the growth, the transformation, the, level, the up leveling you're having. In which case, you'll go back to the relationship and take the tension off that relationship. That's stagnation, to be honest. But it's what some people do. It's the less successful choice, for sure. So, back to the tension. Another opportunity which is frankly the one that is the challenging one, is that you've made, made, yourself, you've made it so you're in this amazing relationship, but your partner's not doing any work to grow with you. You're still growing and, and thriving. In fact, what you're doing is you're becoming more whole, more successful at being yourself and loving who you are. The more tension you put on and they're not moving, the second choice that can happen is you decide that your self-love, your self-support, and who you've become is more important than going back to the relationship the way it was, in which case you'll leave. That's your freedom because you've discovered that amazing relationship isn't so amazing. The third option, which is the one that is ideal, but it does, again, require both partners to be contributing, committed, and um, participating in that relationship fully, is that tension on the relationship because you're growing and moving forward. The other, the other partner realizes that what you're doing is amazing and wants to decide that they need to contribute as well, in which case they will rise up to match you, maybe even go past you, and the tension will come off the relationship in a way that's healthy. Then you can go on together, growing either either together or growing in even uneven patterns, if that makes sense. 
So, okay, props done. <laughs> so the understanding of this is what allows you to have a much healthier way. Oh, you're welcome, Catherine. I'm glad you like that. No, I try to make it clearer because it's the, uh, it's in my it's in my book by the way. Again, one of the chats in the book is called about rubber bands and relationship because it's one of three things. But I really want to make sure you get this point: is that a perfect relationship, as I put in the title, you know, that ideal relationship, because it is a growing thing, it's also not going to stay the same. And so, in your relationships, in your opportunities to grow together, you've got to keep choosing every single moment into that relationship. Again, complacency, status, being static and, and not moving is basically stagnation. And it's not what I recommend, I'll put it that way. So having a healthy relationship is one where you actually find that amazing relationship and then you keep making it finer and more healthy and more amazing as you go on. And so does your partner. Again, both partners together, which is what allows it to grow. It's really the fundamental piece for having a healthy relationship regardless of anything else is because a relationship is usually involving two people, I'm not talking about polyamory or other things, but a time relationship between two people, it requires that both people are participating. I, I've seen quite a few relationships out there. One person is doing all the work, and the other person is not. And again, that's where the tension gets pulled out, and there's a discord and a dysfunction and a disruption of that relationship. So my, my I'm, glad, I'm glad you're paying attention, Catherine. Thank you. Um, I, my, my coaching, and it's funny because more and more of my coaching now with my clients is about self-support, about self-love, about self-guidance, about self-trust, all these different components that when you are in a relationship, you can contribute to that relationship in a powerful way. But the thing is, you're not then dependent upon the relationship for those things. You're actually more fulfilled in yourself. So when you're in a relationship, in some ways, you're actually less invested to make the other person do something for you, which is a good thing, by the way. You may be invested to participate and contribute, but you're invested in a way that allows, if something goes sideways or something doesn't work out, you can step free more easily and you're not gonna be so heart rendered because the other person didn't do what they promised they would do. It's an interesting place to play because in some ways it's almost like you wanna be in a relationship and be invested, but you also wanna be detached at the same time. This is actually the difference, frankly, of codependency to inter interdependency. Again, I've talked about this book many times before, a book that I read years ago, which I love dearly from my master's program, called Conscious Loving by Gay and Katie Hendricks. It's still out in print, you still get it. It's probably over 30 years old now, 25, 30 years old. It's an amazing book on explaining how codependency happens and what to do about it. I recommend that book in my book because I love it so much. And so understanding what codependency is is a, is a gateway to understand freedom in a relationship. And also to understand how when you're in a healthy relationship, you're actually moving from a place of interdependence, not codependency. That's a big shift. There was another point that was floating around, let me see. So, rubber band, codependency, interdependence. Let me think, there was one other piece, I think. Well, I said, I said, okay, yeah, rewind. So I said at the beginning, we're gonna recap because there's another piece in it, which is about when you get into that relationship, there's a sense of complacency because you've got the, you achieve the results like, I'm an amazing person, or let me put it another way. When you got married and that honeymoon is happening, you're like, I'm blissed out, I'm happy, everything's going great. But when you come home again after the honeymoon is where the real opportunities start to show up. And this is the part about relationship that a lot of people don't think about when they're so busy trying to find that perfect relationship. They're so focused on that pearl inside the oyster of the perfect relationship, they don't realize that it's still in a, it's in a, still in a um, oyster shell. As in, it's not just the pearl you're getting, everything goes with it. So being aware that what you're walking into and knowing that what's in the relationship is much more than just the pearl part of the relationship gives you the understanding that what you're walking into won't, won't shock you, scare you, or basically blow you sideways. Because the thing is, some people are so attached to the perfection of the relationship, if anything shows up that's not perfect, they get severely either dis distressed, disappointed, upset, um, angry, or just totally resentful of their partner. So being clear up front with what you want, being clear up front with who you are, being clear up front about what you desire, and knowing that there's more to it than just what you hold is a good place to look forward to a relationship because knowing that you are walking something that is gonna, again, grow and change and evolve, as you said at the beginning, means that you know what you're walking into is a starting point. So the thing I would recommend when you're looking at a relationship and what you wanna have 
is have an ideal of what you want. Absolutely, a vision board, whatever it is, I've got a whole online course about that. But know that when you get there is the starting point of the relationship. So what you then do is know that you're going into the space and going whatever's ahead is unknown, but ideally you're in it together. That's another thing I like recommending with people. You find people you want to do this together with, the journey. But know the journey is un uncharted at this point. So where you're going to go, you don't know yet. You might have a vision about kids and families and other stuff like that, but you don't know for sure. So finding that amazing relationship, finding that um, let's not harm someone else's oust, well, I'm not sure what ouster means. So maybe, maybe reframe that word, Catherine, I'm not sure but, um, if that's a German word or if it's just a misspelled word, I'm not sure. Anyway, so let me finish my, my thought, got pulled right into what you were saying. <sighs> Having a vision, ideal relationship is perfect. Yes, I agree, fulfilling. I, I agree wholeheartedly. So I would say is add to that in your vision, your creation, what you're having, is then what you intend to do and be and have in that relationship together with your partner. So maybe you decide that you are going to be going to Africa to work with kids there to help them out, or you're going to travel the world on adventures, or you're going to build a new social um, activities with in a city. I mean, there's so many things we can do, but having something that's outside of the partnership, because the thing about this is that amazing relationship, I, at least maybe it's my one I'm thinking of that I want to have, is be one where we're going to contribute massively outside of our relationship to the world together. But the relationship that's going to be amazing is one that we are moving forward together and growing together and becoming more um, whole and integrated together at the same time. But again, interdependent, not codependent. So that, I'll talk about in other talks. Um, simply put, Codependency, as I've said this before, but I'll give you the cliff notes because I've done big talks on this before and you go look in my archives for that. I'll give, I'll give you the links for that at the back end, by the way. Um, codependency is one where basically they control how you feel because you depend upon them to make you feel good and you're upset with them, they make you feel bad and vice versa. That's codependency. Interdependency is one where you don't need them for anything, but you love their company, you love being able to participate with them. And frankly, if they're not there, you still get on with your life. That's more codependency, I'm so, uh, sorry, interdependency, excuse me, let me reframe that. So those two are very different, let's be clear. Um, I just said that ouster, ouster thing, oost. I'm not sure what that is now. I'll have, have to go back and listen to what I said so I can reflect what you said. So, okay. Um, <laughs> thank you for that. Now you got me thinking, Catherine, what I said. So having said all that, um, I did mention, I'll put some links at the back end of where you can find the replay, so you can go through the archives, check out my talk about codependency and interdependency, because I've done that one more than once. Um, again, the book I recommended was um, Gay, and Kate, Gay and Katie Henricks' book, Conscious Loving. It's the best book I know on codependency. I love that book. It, it was really a game changer for me. And also put some links in the comments so you can find out how to work with me, because I think some of you are starting to realize that it's time to go deeper, get some real support. So I'm going to put some links in the comments, including my book, because I did mention it at the beginning including my self-love practice, because that's a big part of the work is loving yourself, and including a link to talk to me. It's time, I think, that you find out how to be more amazing, to get what you really want, and to commit to doing some work for yourself. And so the link I'm putting in the comments is a gift for me to you, where it's a conversation we can have as a, as a complimentary chat, and we go from there. I will offer you opportunities to work with me just to be transparent. Um, I'll order correct, maybe it is, Catherine, yes. So replay, so you know where to find me. If you haven't seen my broadcast before, by the way, thanks for being with me this time around. Um, I do this every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time on my personal page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby. The replay is got on my business page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby the author. Please like that page and you can watch the replays there. And also my YouTube channel, which is even more easy to search through because the titles are kept more, um, let's just say with, with YouTube, the titles are more easily sorted through so you find a title that stands out for you. So my YouTube channel is Barry Selby, again, or my social media is my name. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel, and that's youtube.com forward slash user forward slash Barry Selby. And on there is a playlist called Messages from the Masculine. We can sort through all of these broadcasts from newest to oldest. This one will be out there shortly. And again, those links I'd mentioned will be in the comments in the next half an hour, an hour or so after I finish. So um, take advantage of them. Step in, support yourself, start loving yourself more, read my book, it will help you, and get some support from me directly. Um, I do appreciate you watching. I hope this made some sense to you. 
you have any questions or thoughts about this topic, please point them below. And if you want to share it with anybody, feel free to do so. If you want to reach out to me on social media, you know how to find me. With that, I thank you for watching. I'm back in tomorrow with something else. I am actually going to be on a somebody else's Facebook Live. Actually, no, I can't. that's a private group. Okay, forget, forget that. <laughs> I have a couple of Facebook Lives I'm going to be doing with other people, but they're in their own groups, so I can't share that here because it's not public. So I thank you for watching. I'll see you again tomorrow at my usual time at 5 p.m. Pacific time. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Catherine, for the feedback. I appreciate that too, and, and I'm glad you like what I do. And, um, and thank you. I appreciate you recommending my work to other people. So with that, I thank you for being with me as always. Again, I'll see you tomorrow, same time, same channel. And uh, I'll see you then. Take care. Bye.